Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and the threat of North Korea is definitely not going away. And in fact, those threats of North Korea are causing a ripple effect all over the world, because from what it looks like uh, that we've been examining in the Russian media as well, it seems to be that North Korea, if this ends up going down, is going to definitely spread like a wildfire and completely out of control, at least for the short times for foreseeable future, that is. Uh, the National Interest published this article here today, uh, North Korea is to test a nuclear missile that could strike America this year, states the article right here. Uh, it is very troubling, says the U.S. intelligence community believes that North Korea will test a long-range intercontinental ballistic missile. Uh, this actually came out yesterday, I apologize. ICBM this year in an attempt to prove that Kim Jong-un has the capability to strike uh, directly at the American homeland. The Korean uh, regime has been preparing its new missiles for the past several years and has developed uh, miniaturized nuclear warheads designed to fit atop such a weapon. Uh, North Korea is poised to conduct its first ICBM flight test in 2017, according to this article right here. Uh, and this may be why we see on Fox News, this particular, uh, on Capitol Hill, this came out. And let me look, play just a little bit of this for you. Uh, Director Coates, uh, the threat we face are ever expanding. The United States, because of its growing missile and nuclear capabilities combined with the aggressive approach of its leader, Kim Jong-un. Kim is attempting to prove he has the capability to strike the U.S. mainland with a nuclear weapon. He has taken initial steps toward fielding a mobile, a mobile intercontinental ballistic missile, but it has not yet been flight tested. North Korea updated its constitution in 2012 to declare itself a nuclear power, and its officials consistently state nuclear weapons are the basis for regime survival. Suggesting As you can see it right there, there is definitely a threat that the United States is trying to deal with. Uh, in fact, a rare situation also, North Korea sent uh, a letter to Congress protesting U.S. sanctions. Uh, now that may seem like a sign of weakness on the, uh, the leader of Kim Jong-un to send a letter of, uh, you know, to the Congress protesting U.S. sanctions. But don't take that as a sign of weakness, but rather a sign of ultimatum. Uh, you're causing us a lot of problems. We may very well retaliate. Uh, but like I said, though, this is getting completely out of control, if you ask me, because uh, Russia also is in very much uh, concern about the threat of nuclear war. This article right here in the Russian language, it states here, is, is it really that bad, gentlemen? The author of this uh, article on topwar.ru uh, doesn't seem to think that the threat is as bad as what uh, Gen General uh, Posnicker brought out a few days ago, what we shared with you on uh, uh, Israeli News Live here on YouTube. But rather, he does assert in the article here that, uh, yes, the threat is there, but would America be insane enough to even attempt it? Uh, and some of the translations I'll share with you, the initial message of the article comes from the speech of the first deputy of head general staff, uh, Posenker is who he's talking about, powerful hidden component for the rapid global strike. Now we shared that article with you. Uh, he says that Russia, with the aim of destroying most of Russia's nuclear forces and means, was subsequent the destruction of the remaining warheads by the missile defense system. Now, this is where General Posenker stated that he believes that the United States is planning a first strike on Russia. And the article here is actually challenging that, saying that it would be insane for the United States to attempt it, that no matter how many missiles they have, even if they go as high as two to three defense missiles for every one Russian warhead, that eventually Russia is going to break through and retaliate, and that Russia still would have the capability of dropping the equivalent of three Hiroshima bombs on the United States. But you know, it just doesn't seem to add up like that because in another article, this one right here, the U.S. will defeat Russia, the war will be small. They began to analyze uh, the article that came out in the United States on Business Insider 
where the United States suggestively uh, considers, uh, according to the Business Insider, military and defense, that the United States has the capability of defeating Russia in a very small but rapid war. And they compare all the different military technologies that the United States has to that of Russia. But what's very interesting, though, is in the article, is it doesn't just limit Russia, but also they're including China. Both Business Insider as well as TopWar.ru, both of them are examining China and Russia's capabilities against the United States. Why would they throw China in there if it's not to do with North Korea? North Korea seems to be the big issue because China is obligated to protect North Korea in the event of a war, according to the 1961 agreement. So this is what could cause the issues to spiral out of control. And Russia, seeing as President Trump has become more defiant over Syria, is seemingly to distance himself from President Trump and siding himself with North Korea as well by moving his own intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, to the border. Actually, not ICBMs, but his uh, S-400, S-300 systems to the border with North Korea there, uh, suggesting that they would ward off any type of attack by the United States. China has done the same. Even the bulk M3 from Russia has been moved there to knock down the Tomahawk cruise missiles, since the 300 and 400 system didn't hold up to par uh, over in Syria. Anyway, that's our take on these things. Can't say, hope it doesn't turn out that way. The U.S. has also sent another uh, nuclear-capable uh, submarine to the region there, and so the U.S. continues to build their forces up to try to deal with North Korea, but yet at the same time, Beijing and Moscow seem to be bent on protecting North Korea. What's going to happen when all this comes at the end of the day? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom and have a good day.